now that we've got past that bit of oyster, it is fishing time. Welcome to MDLR Fishing, everyone. We have got a gorgeous day here on the beautiful Texas Gulf Coast. It looks like it's going to shape up to be a great one. Very low winds, tons of live oyster to be able to fish, some shallow bayous. It's going to make finding them fish easy. And if we get lucky and hit the jackpot at a shallow area, then there are going to be tons of reds. Looking forward to catching some of those drag pullers because it has been a minute since we've been in them. So I noticed that this bend, I've been keeping an eye out on the ones that I've got fish like marks, the waypoints. That bend right there. Ow. <laughs> it dude hurt me. <laughs> Turd. Um, that bend right there was only two feet. And then the ones where I've got fish marks were actually like three feet. They're just, yeah, they're, yeah. The water is a bit more comfortable for them, I would suspect okay we got a school right up ahead 12 o'clock i have yet to get one to bite but they're there oh dang yeah there there's hundreds of them here my notes said that they would have locked jaw it was up to me to figure out what it is that they were going to want to bite and i have went through everything but the kitchen sink I mean, they are out here in big numbers. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> that mullet. The mullet just went airborne. Well, this is just one of the days where I'm going to kick back and enjoy nature's beauty. I get to see these guys in their element. And uh, they just want to basically turn their nose at my lure. Nonetheless, just knowing that they're out here is awesome. Not too sure what it is that I can use to get them to bite. There was one lure that I really wanted to cast at them because I thought that maybe it might get the job done, but um, I left it at home. So the next thing that we're going to do is basically come here and be in this particular area right as the sun is coming up. Maybe these guys stop feeding and uh, they're just going into that, like just a comatose state where their belly is in the mud, the water is still cool, and they're just chilling. They're like, nah, it's time to take a siesta. But to test that theory out, we have to get here super early and that means waking up at three in the morning Another one, and another one. Got him, got him. Oh yes. And there goes, there he goes. Okay, I'm gonna stake myself out. I don't wanna spook everything else that's in there. There are hundreds of reds in here right now. And when I bring this fella in, you're gonna see just how big they are. These guys are massive, y'all. Look at this, there's one right here. Yeah, in my notes, I said there were hundreds of reds here. It was that they had locked y'all. And like clockwork, they're back out here, but getting them to bite has proven to be difficult until now. Oh my gosh, look at this monster. I don't want to muscle him in. I mean, he's a big boy. Oh gosh, he spooked his buddy. We still got plenty of real estate before we get to the back lake. So let's get this guy in. Hopefully the knot holds. I gotta hurry up and get him in and just release him. I'm not gonna take any photos or anything like that. We'll get it from the camera. Well, no, water is 84 degrees. Yeah, it's not, it is not hot. It's still cool and comfortable for them. Gosh, look at this fella. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Success. Oh, so sweet. 
like after trying repeatedly casting every bit of lures that I got every setup behind me I've cast and all attempts have failed I've even cast this one I mean that is gorgeous look at that that is what is out here they are massive this one's about 27 28 inches somewhere around there gorgeous redfish let's get them off and back inside the water oh wow he destroyed the paddle tail is gone see you later buddy and there he goes he lives to fight another day go reproduce massive monsters back here y'all hundreds of them like literally hundreds the marsh is infested with them you just got to figure out how to get them to bite and that paddle tail it sealed the deal they're feeding they're just being very very darn selective and i'm spooking them left and right as we're uh, going through i am just super grateful that we were able to get one so here's the color that got the job done for us i don't know where my plastic went but that dude just thrashed it right there that's a black plastic with a uh, a red flake holy moly that dude just put some bend to the hook yeah he bent that hook out and reds are strong Oh my gosh. <laughs> that guy's gonna have brain damage. He looked like a torpedo just got fired off from my kayak to yours. He hit you. All right, I'm gonna keep moving. These guys are spooked right here. So I'm gonna continue moving towards the uh, back lake entrance. There goes a crawling red right over there. He ain't gonna be doing that unless he was feeding. I don't know that I'm going to be able to go in there and chase after him and get him to bite, but it's certainly worth a try. Oh my gosh, it is super shallow. I see him though. All right, I can see him from here. I certainly can reach him. That wind. He's literally right there. His dorsal is barely coming out of the water. I really don't want to mess this up. Oh, I spooked him. Just that tiny little splash spooked that fella. Oh, yeah, that spooked him. He ain't gonna bite. Oof, saw him crawling from super far away. It was worth the push pull effort. There he is right there again. Oh, I wish he would have just bit it. Turd. All right, so this is spooking them as well. Let's put this away. I don't know what else that I got that's gonna fall in the water and be super quiet. I just, I don't think I have such a lure right now. We'll get the paddle tail loaded, ready to go. And uh, that's basically what did the trick. I'm gonna have to cast super far away from them and see if I can make it happen by bringing it right through their track. We're almost to my target area, and then that's it. Oh gosh, that, that, that hurts. He's there, feeding. He's crawling through the water in search of food. Just very finicky.
There goes one. He didn't want nothing. I mean, he's literally laying down in the mud. Got him. Put it right in front of his face. He's laying in the mud. Put it right in front of his face and he bit it. Oh my gosh, maybe that's gonna be the trick. Look at them, they're all getting spooked now. Let's hurry up and bring this guy in. I got a bent hook too. I should have retied one on, but I don't have my hook tackle tray. Oh wow, literally saw him laying down. He was asleep, asleep in the mud. Go. No! <laughs> oh my gosh! Dude! There we are. Now you're in the net. Another fella the same size. Well, if y'all were wondering where the reds are, here they go. Asleep in the mud until you put it literally right in front of their face. Look at this guy. Holy cow. All right. Yeah, that water is still cool. Not so bad. There we go. Gorgeous redfish. There's a gorgeous red right there. I think I'm gonna have to tie on another hook. I mean, they literally bent this out and this is a saltwater grade hook too. All right, we're almost to the entrance of the back lake. There goes the mouth right up ahead. And this little ditch was gonna be my last ditch effort no pun intended this is where the reds get in and out of one of the most massive back lakes that i've ever fished and i honestly thought the little bit of deeper water was going to hold them if they were going to be sleeping they'd be in here chilling at the bottom i have not been able to get the drop on any of these reds that are laying belly in the mud so that I can put the lure in their face to test out my theory that all you have to do is just get lucky, put it in their face, and then they were gonna come to and bite. Um, maybe on the way out, I seriously doubt it because I'm gonna be against the wind. Oh, I really wanted to test that theory out, but just seeing the way the one redfish reacted when I put it right on his nose, dude bit and just hauled butt. That's like having a dream at night when you're sleeping. Next thing you know, your wife puts a darn whopper right in front of your face. And so you bite and you run to the toilet or something. I mean, I don't know. But what I do know is that that fella came too as soon as he felt it right in front of his face. This is the end of the road. All right. Well, it was fun while it lasted seeing so many reds. Back lake is super shallow. They're not even gonna be in there. If they are, that's a death wish because they're gonna run out of water. The birds are literally walking right above the surface of the water. So let's turn around, get this motor going. I don't, I don't see anything happening in here. There's just not enough water to support them, especially with oxygen for them to breathe. So let's uh, get going. All that you see right here is mullet. Let's get going. Oh my gosh, 88 degrees. Yeah, it's getting warm back here. Turn this around. I think the tide is still incoming. As there's no, yeah, that tide is super incoming right now. I'm trying to go against the current. Turn this kayak around. Okay, 
let's get out of here. All right, thank goodness we have made it to the entrance of the marsh. It is super hot, but I am happy that we found the reds. They are alive and well inside the skinny water, and it's just a shame that I did not get to prove my theory that the reds are literally asleep with their belly in the mud. Not until you cross over them with the kayak that you spook them, they do a big old tail thrust, kick up a mud cloud, and start drumming away from you. Um, I was hoping that I could at least sight cast one more or just actually dangle my lure in front of his face to see if he was going to instinctively just bite and then take off. Um, I'm thinking that's what happened with the two that I caught. I just got lucky on the first one and then the second one, y'all saw what happened. So the next time we come out, these reds should still be here. And I'm thinking that if uh, we get here early enough and start fishing, as soon as the sun comes up, we may catch them being active. And uh, we'll find that out later on at the beginning of the next week. So we'll have to see what happens. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That definitely helps us. I hope I don't hit the oyster. All right, we made it through. It's gonna be a great day. Um, if you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up button, please. Don't forget that I'm also on Patreon. So if you would like to know where it is that I am fishing, what makes me successful, I do fishing reports on my Patreon page and it's just a very low fee for a monthly subscription so if you're interested in something like that go down into the description below check it out click on the link that will take you to patreon and uh, you should be able to see what it is that i am talking about and it should help to also speed your learning curve so that's going to do it until next time tight lines y'all